Okay, great. So uh, that was document at the time execution. Now, um, term at the time tries to flip the problem on the other side and do it uh, and, and, and do it in a more in a more efficient way. So the basic idea here is um, instead of trying to merge lists, what you're going to do is you're going to incrementally compute the scores for all the documents, um, but you're gonna you're gonna update it one term at a time, right? So document at a time. The reason it's called document at a time is you're computing a score for the document, and then you're emitting that score, and then you move on to the next document. That's the basic idea, right? So you're merging lists, you, you pop the document, you compute the score for that document, you emit it, and then you increment the pointers. Um, term at a time, uh, and, and you're done with that document before you move on to the next one. Uh, term at a time, you do it differently. You sort of simultaneously compute the scores for all documents, uh, but incrementally, right? You don't compute the score all, uh, all at once, you sort of update the scores for everything. So how does this work? Um, again, we have, um, we're gonna be working with the same query as before. So our query is thing, pink, ink, and the scoring function is linear, so I give a weight of 10 to think, and a weight of two to pink, and a weight of one to uh, ink. Right, and we're just looking at the, at, the, at, the, at the raw frequencies, but you can imagine TF idea for whatever you want here. Right. So how does this work? Um, let's say I have a five total documents in my collection. Uh, so what I do is I, I initialize an array that has a slot for each one of the documents that I have. And then what I do is I fetch the inverted list for pink, Right? So pink occurs once in document 4 and once in document 5, and pink has a weight of 2 in my query. So what I do is I take this 2, multiply it by the frequency in each one of the uh, documents in the inverted list, and update the score in the array that I initialized. Update means just add to the current counter, right? So it's really, really simple. So. Uh, all the scores start with zero, and then I add the score for pink, so document four uh, gets a two, and document five gets a two, because they, they pink occurred once in both of them, and pink has um, uh, a weight of two, right? So uh, then you take the next word, the next word is ink, right? Ink has a weight of one, and it occurs in documents three, four, and five. So uh, I just iterate over that list, say document three, add one times the weight, and the weight is one, so just add one to the score. So add one to zero. Document four, add one to whatever it was. It used to be two, now it's three. Document five, add one to two, you get a three, okay? Document thing occurs only in document three, so I take document three and I'm gonna increment the score, but not by one, but by 10, because that's the weight of the word in the query. So document three gets a score of 11. So hopefully this, it, it, it's obvious how this works. So what you're doing in this case is you're taking the term and you're updating all the documents based on the inverted list of that term, and then you move on to the next term, and then you move on to the next term. Okay. So um, you are computing the scores in no particular order, and that's a critical thing when we talk about optimizations. Uh, you can also process the terms in no particular, in any given order. So that's another nice thing. Now, once I'm done with this, I'm not actually fully done, right? So, um, if you think about what doc at a time does, doc at a time only emits the scores when they're non-zero, right? If the score is zero for a document, doc at a time would not emit it. It, it only emits when, when, when the scoring function yields a non-zero. This computes the scores for all documents, so uh, document one and document two have zero scores. So as the final step, what you typically have to do is you have to take this array that you've computed, these are my final scores, and extract the result set, right? So uh, extracting the result set usually means uh, just taking the non-zero entries, or it could mean you're sorting it in some way, right? So usually you would rank by score, so you would sort it by these numbers in decreasing order, um, or take top five or whatever you're looking for. Um, right, and that's an important part because that actually costs uh, something, that extraction. So what is the complexity of this thing? 
Uh, the complexity is uh, fairly simple. It's linear in n. It's O of little n, where n is the total number of posts. So it's better than what we had on the previous slide. It's better than what we had for dog at a time, uh, except now we got this friend dragging along, this big n. And this big n is the total number of documents in the database. That's the size of the resulting list. Uh, now, why do we need that? Because in the end, we need to walk over this list to extract the set of results. Uh, and usually, the big N is actually a lot smaller than the little N. Right? So uh, for many types of queries, the little N is a lot bigger than the big N, so you just forget about the big N. Uh, so, it, uh, so you just say it's linear in N. Uh, but in some cases, your big N will actually be bigger than the little N, so you have to take that into account. <clears throat> okay, so, uh, so what are the trade-offs? Why is one better than another? Um, so what's term at a time? Term at a time, uh, we said it's, it's linear in the number of posts, and that is basically the best you can do before you start resulting to sort of before you start dropping to approximations and heuristics. So uh, that's really the best you can do uh, linear in N. Um, uh, another nice thing about term at a time is uh, you, if, if you think about these lists sitting on disk, term at a time has sequential I.O. patterns. Why is that? Uh, your index is stored on disk and typically an index for a single term is stored contiguously. Right? It's a file on disk or a sequence of uh, sectors and, uh, and it's just sitting there. Right. And what are you doing here? I'm taking pink and I'm fetching the entire inverted list for pink, and then I'm fetching the entire inverted list for uh, ink and thing, right? So what this means is I have a sequential read over the sectors of the disk that contain that inverted list. And that is nice because uh, in normal storage, sequential reads are a lot faster than random reads. Right? Uh, furthermore, I can optimize this Remember, I said that it doesn't matter in what order you're producing these, right? I, I, I could, uh, you know, I could, I, I could use thing as the first, and then pink as the second, and I would still get the same scores because you're just adding them. So it doesn't matter in what order you produce, uh, you're processing the terms. So you could optimize it further by saying, well, what is the order of inverted lists on my disk, right? And process the query terms in the order in which the inverted lists are stored on disk. So then you have a single pass over your disk, a single sequential read, which is going to be very, very nice, um, I.O.-wise.